Joining me now is the Democratic Congressman Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey. He's the co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus. He's a member of the House Financial uh, Services Committee. Congressman, good to see you again, as always. Thank you uh, for being with us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my, uh, my producers to just sort of put up uh, a, a picture of the Problem Solvers Caucus, who you all are, and then the Republicans in the Problem Solvers Caucus, um, about 30 of them, I think, and, 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 and some of them are people who are elected yeah. as Republicans in districts that Joe Biden won. They're probably not looking for some of their colleagues to entirely torch the U.S. economy over this debt ceiling debate. I think that's very fair to say. I, mean, I, I think they understand it. And, you know, frankly, I think most of uh, Republicans and Democrats in the Congress right now understand what's on the line here of just how severe this would be if we default as a country and don't pay our bills and the impact it would have on everything from Social Security to veterans and the VA to health benefits and jobs overall, the and put aside what it would do to people's 401ks and the market uh, overnight. So, I mean, everyone knows just how much is on the line here. You've got some people, of course, who are the, uh, on the extreme right, who, who frankly just don't care and are willing to roll the dice. Uh, but that's not where most people are, which is, gives you a sense of how much people want to get a deal done. Uh, look, you can tell me some things as if we're not on TV right now, the kind of stuff that you'd have to kill me if you told me. <laughs> you, you are the people. I mean, there, there, are, there are sort of five votes separating one side of a deal from another, right? Whether it's this discharge petition that all Democrats have signed on to or the number of votes that Kevin McCarthy needs to get a debt ceiling done. You have more than that in your Problem Solvers Caucus. So it would strike me that things must be going on in this Problem Solvers Caucus that, that are, uh, that's happening below the surface. I mean, listen, there's a lot of conversations going on, including early this morning and late last night. People are looking, you know, as, as uh, Patrick McHenry said, there are, it's a short list, I believe now, and the, but there's still issues around that short list. And people are looking for solutions on how to get past it. Every, you got a lot of folks from both sides talking to each other, which I think is good. It doesn't mean we're there yet. You know, it's a hard, what you, what, the way this is going to get done, as you know, is more from the middle, from from the left and the right. You're probably going to lose people on the far left and far right. So there's a recognition this has to be bipartisan to get done in the House of Representatives. Plus, you have to keep 60, as you just pointed out, in the Senate. So this is not one of these things where one party uh, will carry the day. It's going to take both. So that's tough, right? Because everything, every time you propose one thing, you lose some people on either side. And that's what makes this extra complicated. So in my simple opinion, as a non-elected person, the thing that made this complicated is that this has been a generally speaking automatic process. There were about three times in our history where we've come close once uh, under the Obama administration within 72 hours of, of the deadline. But that just shouldn't be happening. I, I'm trying to understand why we don't accept the fact that we have a budgeting process and an appropriations process, which is where the discussion on spending should come in. And then we have a debt ceiling approval, totally. which is automatic and should not be the that, that should not be the space for this debate. It, it doesn't. I, I'm, I think it's really valid for Republicans who think we spend too much or we don't bring enough in. I think that's a valid discussion, but this isn't the venue for it. This is not the place. I mean, we got to get out of this cycle of insanity. There's only two countries in the world that do it this way. This is purely about. You know, we we decide every fall as part of the budget and appropriations process what we're going to spend. This is just paying our credit card bill that we put on for the country, right? So this shouldn't even be a discussion. And frankly, it shouldn't happen now. You know, the Problem Solvers Caucus, we had proposed, let's raise the debt ceiling or suspend it. Let's take put this aside. Um, and then you can have a conversation about long-term debt and deficit, which we should talk about the kind of fiscal policy in our country. Do it as a bipartisan commission. Do it as part of the appropriations process. But the idea that you're holding things hostage, right, that you're literally holding the country in the full faith and credit of the United States hostage um, and putting in policy issues that, frankly, don't do anything for debt and deficit, right? They're not going to actually help solve any of those problems, but they're just policy areas that the other side wants to try to get in here because they think they're holding the country hostage and the president putting him in a tough position. Um, and they so they're trying to just leverage as much as possible. This is not the way you should be governing. And, and other countries like China, like the government of China, look at this and say, this is phenomenal. It's the United States in disarray. Array, right? That's the only ones who are winning here. And, and, you know, we're putting everything at risk for no reason.
So you brought up China, and this is an important point that I, I was making in the introduction, that everybody buys U.S. Treasuries. U.S. Treasuries pay less interest, they have a smaller yield, as they say in bonds, than anything else in the world because they are absolutely the safest investment in the world. All other investments are gauged against a U.S. Treasury uh, that, that has no risk. What's the danger of Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall here or the, 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 the China vase breaking? Uh, it, 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 once you've broken this, well, I mean, the China you thing have broken it forever. Yeah. I mean, I'm most worried about China running around other countries, the government of China, and saying, look, the United States doesn't pay its bills. Don't buy their treasuries, right? Go somewhere go somewhere else for that. And that's what I really, you know, frankly, we should all be concerned about because they want to be the peg currency of the world, right? That's that's their goal is to knock us off and not be the 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 dollar being the, the supreme currency in the world, which would affect our standing in the world. It affects us with our allies. That would obviously be a, a huge disaster. And by not paying our bills on time and even threatening to not pay our bills, we put our reputation uh, at risk, uh, our whole the full faith and credit of the United States of America, which is why we should never be here in the first place. And, you know, Trump, as you pointed out, President Trump raised the debt ceiling three times clean, even though, you know, and he added eight trillion dollars to the debt under their administration. People shouldn't forget this. He literally said we shouldn't play, he said we shouldn't play politics with with uh, the debt ceiling. But here he goes, he's actually encouraging people to default on his side, which is obviously really helping uh, the those who are on the extreme right mess up the negotiations, right? And the, President Trump is just encouraging them to actually default, which is which is crazy if you love our country to do that. Congressman, good to see you as always. Thank you for taking time for us this morning. The Democratic Representative Josh, Josh Gottheimer of New Jersey. He is the co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus.